Hello everyone, this video will explain to you the mechanisms of hypoxic and ischemic cellular injury. Introduction The human body is made up of trillions of cells. Each is confined to a specific range of functions and structure. It nevertheless is able to handle physiologic demands by maintaining homeostasis. When homeostasis is disrupted by physiologic or pathologic stress, the body tries to adapt to these changes. But if the limits of adaptive responses are exceeded, depriving the cells of essential nutrients such as oxygen or become compromised by mutations, a sequence of events of cellular injury follows. Now the question is, what is the difference between hypoxia and ischemia? Hypoxia is a phenomenon where a tissue loses oxygen availability, causing reduced amounts of hemoglobin. While ischemia is when a tissue experiences reduced blood flow, which is commonly caused by mechanical obstruction in the artery or vein. Mechanisms of Ischemic Cellular Injury When blood flow is restricted to tissues, the oxygen tension falls down within the cells. There is subsequent loss of oxidative phosphorylation which leads to decreased generation of ATP. This energy crisis results to several changes in the functions of the cell, such as failure of the sodium pump, altered cellular metabolism, structural disruption of protein synthetic apparatus, and failure of calcium pump. Along these changes also comes with alterations in the structure of the cell, which includes cellular swelling, blebbing of the membranes, loss of glycogen particles, formation of myelin figures, nuclear membrane changes, and DNA damage. When the oxygen level comes back to normal, these adaptive changes allow the cell to survive and continue to function. However, if ischemia persists, irreversible injury and necrosis ensue. Irreversible injury causes severe swelling of the mitochondria due to the increased mitochondrial transition permeability. And also extensive damage to plasma and nuclear membranes due to activation of cellular enzymes such as proteases, phospholipases, and endonucleases. These follow cellular death, which is mainly by necrosis. But apoptosis also happens by the release of proapoptotic molecules like cytochrome C from the leaky mitochondria. Restoration of blood flow following ischemic stroke can be achieved by the means of thrombolysis or mechanical recanalization. However, reperfusion may paradoxically worsen the injury initially caused by ischemia, producing a now called ischemic reperfusion injury. It occurs when damaging processes are set in motion during reperfusion, causing the death of the cells that might have recovered otherwise. Hypoxia and ischemia that occurs in the tissues can occur at any organ in the body, especially the heart, the muscles, the kidneys, and the brain. When oxygen and blood supply is reduced in one of these organs, there will be signs of disease. So, in a person who experiences reduced blood flow to the brain, it will be insufficient to meet the brain's metabolic demands. An interruption of blood flow to the brain for more than 10 seconds might already cause unconsciousness. And if it goes beyond 2 to 3 minutes, death of the brain tissue happens. And again, this is because of the worsening of ATP depletion that leads to increase in cytosolic calcium, which activates cellular enzymes, as well as increasing mitochondrial permeability, which causes its contents to leak out.